morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, it is uh, 10 a.m., uh, so we're going to um, we're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to so so the rules are going to be uh, I'm going to mute everybody, uh, and uh, you know those of you guys that have been on before, I'm going to start by muting everybody. Mute all. Um, uh, this way we don't get the background noise. Um, when you come on uh, to, to talk or to ask a question, kind of just unmute yourself and uh, uh, make sure that your, um, uh, your volume on your computers, if you're not wearing a headset, is you know, not super loud because we'll get feedback on that. Um, and, uh, but other than that, um, um, we're gonna have a, uh, a good meeting this morning. So we have uh, a guest coming in. Who's on board? That's uh, board. That's uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne Einhorn. Give us a thumbs up, Wayne. All right. So Wayne is going to uh, uh, talk to us uh, about uh, the market now and some things that we can do. And uh, Wayne is a uh, national speaker. Um, he uh, has uh, been through all of this before. Wayne has owned his own office up in Toronto. Uh, if you saw the uh, uh, the invitation at age 35. Wayne sold his office, uh, probably made a bunch of money and, and then moved on to coaching and uh, helping people become successful in brokerages around the world. Um, so we, uh, he's got a, a great insight on uh, things that are going on. Uh, Wayne does uh, speak around the world. He, uh, we've met him uh, through uh, speaking over at uh, uh, Remax at their R4 convention. Um, and uh, we're happy to have them here. Uh, and it seems like we're getting a lot more people coming through right now, which is good. Uh, so uh, I'm going to unmute Wayne. Uh, and then Wayne, you could tell us how we want to do the classes and, and uh, the classes, the questions and that type of thing. Does that sound good, guy? Yes, sounds right. great, Randall. Yeah, right. and, and you know what? Uh, if anyone, I mean, we've got obviously got the call muted so that there's some quality, we don't get background noise. Um, if anyone knows how to chat, if there's a question uh, while uh, in the middle of my presentation, which will last probably 20 or 25 minutes, uh, then uh, we can just shoot Randall a message uh, on the chat, or you can raise your hand too, and Randall can contact you on chat. And certainly afterwards, I'm happy to open the floor up for questions. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming this morning and welcome you all. And uh, it's a real privilege to be able to get with any group of professionals, but particularly this group. Um, as Randell mentioned, I've been uh, in the real estate business for a long time. I got actually out of high school and got into real estate. Um, and so uh, that's, and I'm 55, so that's 35 years that that, uh, that I've been involved at all levels of the business. And this is actually um, my fourth uh, crisis, if I could use that word. I mean, a lot of people avoid that. We use words like unprecedented times and so forth, but I think this qualifies. And, uh, and so what I wanna chat, uh, just uh, talk with you guys this morning about is two things. One is what I learned over that period of time uh, in terms of dealing with other crises uh, in the real estate industry. And in every one of those, I was in a leadership position. Um, and uh, including owning my own business, as Randell said, I sold that in 2000. Uh, and uh, I had 200 agents at the time, a highly successful, highly profitable business. I was a, in those days, I was a, considered a big brokerage. Today, it's, it's probably mid-sized. Um, but I want to share with you what I learned over those years of, of dealing with situations like this. And also, as Randell said, I have the privilege of working with many of the large brokerages around uh, the United States, mostly REMAX brokerages. And so I can share with you some of the best practices that agents are employing to, uh, to, to really help our businesses thrive in these unprecedented times. Um, I think there's two things I want to just set up, guys, as far as the background of the conversation. Um, one is that, that where we are right now is always where we are at this kind of cycle in a crisis. And what I mean by that is, you know, if I go back to the last time I remember feeling like this was 2008, I believe the date actually was September the 8th. And, uh, <clears throat> and there was a, I remember turning on the news and there was uh, 5,000 people 
walking up Wall Street um, with bankers boxes in their hand, all other belongings in the boxes. And they were all employees of, uh, of uh, Lehman Brothers who had gone bankrupt after uh, 110 years of business. And, uh, and we all thought, what the heck, right? And we didn't know what to expect. And there was a lot of fear and intrepidation and, uh, and, 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 we, and then you know, things kind of snowballed from there, but it, it had exactly the same feeling. And so the background of the conversation for me is that number one is we don't know, we're always feeling the same way at this point in, in an event like this. But the second part of the conversation, I think the background of the conversation is super important and what's different is, and there's two things that are different. One is we kind of, we have a finite idea of time when this will end, right? Um, and there's some discussion about whether it's uh, April 30th or May 15th or May 30th. But, but essentially, I mean, nobody sat around in 2008 and said, oh my gosh, in June of 2009, this is going to be over, <laughs> right? And so, you know, we've got some finite level of time. And, and honestly, it's not that far down the road. I mean, it seems like forever right now. But I often ask people, myself included, look back at my own career and say, hey, did I ever have a slow 60 or 90 days? And the answer is, yeah, every four or five years, I had a slow 60 or 90 days. And, and how did I handle it, right? And so the second piece of the, the sorry, sorry, the second, I, I guess, uh, piece of the background of, com of conversation is this, that the reasons people buy and sell real estate aren't changing. In other words, people sell because they formed a family, they, or, sorry, buy, I should say, because they, they formed a family, right? That they're getting married or they got more kids and they gotta, they've gotta get either A, their first house, or they've gotta get uh, a house. A bigger house. Uh, they they we they buy or sell real estate because families are splitting up, right? We've got divorces, and uh, and so that's a reason people buy or sell real estate. People buy or sell real estate because somebody dies or somebody's moving into a home, right? Um, people buy or sell real estate because they're transferred in or out of an area. None of those reasons change. You know, uh, people don't go home if they're getting divorced and go, hey, you know, honey, I don't hate you anymore. Let's not sell the house. They say, hey, when can we get this darn thing on the market? And by the way, we need two more, right? And it was interesting. I was talking to a broker yesterday in Phoenix, and he said, well, it, it kind of works like this. I was talking to a buyer who who's retiring to Phoenix, right? And I think he was coming from somewhere in the Northwest. The family was coming from the North, uh, sorry, the Northeast, I should say. And, uh, and he said, you know, the buyer said to me, hey, I was going to come in April, but it doesn't look like I'm going to come. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to come in June. And the broker in Phoenix joked and said, hey, you know, it's June or July. And he goes, wow, the, the weather here isn't great in June or July. It's like 110 degrees. And the buyer said, well, I don't care. I'm retiring and I need a house for next winter. And so I can't come in April. I'm going to come in June or July. You see, it's just moved down the road. And so I think the second piece for me of the background of the conversation is that there's going to be a lot of pent up demand when we get back open for business, right? Of people that had to transact that just can't transact in this time. And so the question is, if, if you know, if we know there's an end and we know there's, there's an economy at the end, then the next question for me becomes, well, how do we conduct ourselves in business, right? And there's three key strategies, three key strategies that we're, we're, we're working with agents uh, on. Um, and I want to review those with you today. Um, the first one is probably is the most important, is why it's number one. The first thing that we've got to do, guys, is look after ourselves. What I, I discovered this a long, long time ago is that I can't look after others if I don't look after myself, right? And I've got four things that I think are really, really important uh, relative to looking after ourselves. Um, and both of them revolve, or sorry, all of it revolves around our, our mental health, our well-being, our physical health, and our business, right? Those are kind of the three areas for me that I think are most at risk right now. And so let's talk, talk, talk first about sort of our mental health, our mental well-being. You know, I, a couple of weeks ago uh, when this all got started, I, I read a post, I, uh, you know, as many of us do, thousands of people, uh, Facebook friends, uh, and, and many of them are realtors and, and somebody posted that uh, at, uh, you know, around noon hour, they said, well, I'm trying to figure out which set of pajamas to wear for my 
daytime pajamas because it's probably time to get out of my nighttime pajamas, right? And, uh, and uh, you know, I, 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 I see a bunch of people smiling. I laugh when I read it, but then I thought, gosh, you know, that's not that funny. And, you know, we got to get up and suit up and show up. My rule, guys, is, uh, is I dress every day as though it's a business day. Now, I'm on a webcam here. I don't have to get on webcams for my meetings. I, I could not dress like this. But what I tell people is, hey, if you wear a tie generally, then put a tie on. I don't generally wear a tie. But you know what? I always have a little something in my, in my shirt. Oh, sorry, there in my jacket pocket that matches my shirt. Every morning, it goes in the same way, right? For me, it's a work day. So I think that's number one is we got to just get up and make like it's a work day. The second part for me of looking after ourselves is get some exercise. Now, I, you know, you may not be a fitness person. That might not have been part of your regimen before. I don't, that doesn't matter. You got to get outside, do a spin around the block. You know, at EDI, at my company, we have a business development department. We're all in the morning watching a U.S. Marine uh, workout video for 15 minutes. And the goal, guys, for us is not to become triathletes, right? It's just to get our blood going and get the endorphins moving, right? And get our mental energy back. And so, you know, we got to get up, get dressed. Number two is, is we got to get some movement, get some, some physical activity. Um, the third thing is that we've got to have some business activities planned, right? And I'll, I'll get to the how-to in that uh, in a minute, but I think there's two pieces to the business activities, right? One is that we've got to communicate. We've got to be in communication with our community, our customers, our clients, um, our database, right? So we've got to communicate with, uh, with people, and I'll talk about how to do that in a minute. And the second thing is that we've got a real opportunity right now um, to, to really develop our business. We call it sharpen the saw, look at things that are weak in our business and, uh, and really develop that. And I'll give you some specific strategies. But the look after yourself part for me is, is those four things, right? It's that I've got to get up and get dressed, get, make like it's a business day get some exercise, right? Get physical for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, whatever that looks like for you, um, and get some business activities planned, talking to our customers and figuring out how I can improve my business. And if we do that every day, we're gonna feel better about ourselves and we're gonna hit the end of this, uh, of this uh, situation with, with the ground running because as I said, there is an end and there's going to be an economy at the end. Right, and I want everybody to be able to participate in that. The, the absolute opposite of that, which you do not want to do, you know, Rendell mentioned that I owned a company and, and I had many top agents in my company. And there was one, and I had relationships. I still, to this, to this day, I sold that business 20 years ago and I still have relationships with all those people. And, and, and there's, one, there's this one particular agent, uh, her name was Diana. And Diana's husband's name was Michael, Diana and Michael. And Michael was a school teacher. And um, every July, June 23rd or 25th or whatever the heck day it was, the, the school was out. They had a motor home and they would load, they had two kids, they'd load them up in the motor home and they would go on fantastic vacations. And Diana was an excellent producer. In fact, 20 years ago, she did $4 million on, in 2000 prices, right? And, um, and I could, guys, I could set my, my watch by this event. The fourth Friday of September, so Diana and her family would go on this wonderful holiday. She'd be out of communication. She'd be in a motor home. They'd, they'd go to Alaska. They'd do it. They're just fantastic vacations. They'd come home, and as I said, I could set my, my watch by this event. The fourth Friday of every September, for the 20 years I owned that business, Diana was in my office, totally an emotional wreck crying because there was no business to be had. And the reason there was no business to be had was for the two months previous, she hadn't called anybody. Right. And so for the month after she got back, there was no listings, no buyers, no nothing. Right. And then predictably we get her, uh, you know, get her focused and motivated. And then by the end of October, the cash register would be ringing again. And so the, you know, that's kind of for me, the opposite of, communicating with clients is, is, is when we don't communicate with clients, we're not going to take advantage of that economy uh, when things come back. So the next question is, well, how, how do I communicate with clients? 
uh, my own opinion, guys, is it's not appropriate to phone up and talk about real estate today, right? Uh, you know, to phone up and go, hey, Randell, would you like to buy or sell real estate? It's really not even possible. Um, but what an opportunity for us to reconnect with our community, with our, with our clients, our past clients in our database. The, the words I wrote down were rekindle uh, and improve relationships, right? And so the, as long as I've been in the business, guys, there's two reasons uh, that we don't call past clients. See if this resonates with you. Number one is we're not really sure what to say, what to talk about. There's nothing really to talk about. And number two, there's been a period of time passed, in some case years since the deal's closed, and we're embarrassed to call. Well, what a great opportunity to pick the phone up and call and say, hey, you know, it's been really super busy the last three or four years. I, we call it the apology script. I apologize for, for not keeping in touch, um, but I wanted to use this opportunity to reach out and do two things. One, make sure you and your family are safe and okay. Uh, and secondly, um, uh, offer uh, some community service. If you know anybody that is shut in, that you know can't get uh, a prescription at the local pharmacy, at Walgreens or wherever, or, or, is, or, or a, is not mobile and needs some groceries picked up that they've ordered, Hey, I'm healthy. I've got a car and, and you know, I'm here uh, doing business in the community when times are good. I want to make sure that I'm of community service when the times are bad. We have put out viral, vi uh, sorry, videos uh, to that effect, made tens of thousands of phone calls, our clients, uh, agents, and the response has been fantastic. It's been overwhelming, right? Because it allows us to go out and be uh, good stewards in our community. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to communicate with people. So remember I talked about daily, uh, daily activities. My, my objective for you guys would be part of that, that uh, daily routine is that you, we, we put 10 calls down. We make 10 calls, right? Uh, and, uh, and the cool part of that call is it works great in a voicemail. You know, would you like to list your house? Doesn't work so great in a voicemail. Hey, if, uh, let me offer my help and, and make sure you guys are okay. Works fine in a voicemail. And so, uh, so, you know, I want you guys to set yourselves a, a goal to communicate with your clients and get back with your community, get connected. Another thing I'd recommend if you don't, uh, Remax is free Zoom accounts, get a Zoom account. Like this stuff is the way we're communicating today, right? And it's way better to be able to see people than it is to, to not, right? If I was just a voice, a talking voice, it doesn't have the same effect. And so your communications with people, you're gonna get connected with them. And you can use it for family and friends too, right? The, 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 so we, we've got look after yourself. We've got communicate with clients. And the third strategy is sharpen the saw, right? And here's what I would recommend, guys, for how many times over the past bunch of years have we said, you know what, I'm gonna, I got to get that darn video uh, strategy moving. Oh, I got to do something about social media. I got to get all my clients on my social media. Uh, feed, you know, or uh, gosh, I got to get video out of social media or yeah, my CRM's a mess. So I got to, I got to get my customers all in one place, right? Or my, my, my finances, my budget, I don't even have a budget. My taxes aren't done. There's so many things that time is a, is a barrier for, right? And, and gosh, we have a ton of time on our hands right now. So here, here's what number three, sharpen the saw means for me is make a list of everything that you think needs improvement in your business. And maybe there's two, three, four, five, six things on that list. And every day, spend one hour and work on one of those items on that list. If it's a video strategy, shoot some video. Uh, I, I, I remember talking to Randell and, uh, about a, uh, somebody who shot a video here and got it out. And, and I'll have, maybe ask Randell later to talk about the specifics of that. But it was an amazing story, right? And it's all about just getting out there, getting in front of our community. I think today more than ever, guys, people are isolated. They are, you know, they where, you know, in our normal lives, I think, as I said, one of the reasons that we don't call is we, we have nothing to talk about and we're afraid of interrupting people. Today, we're not interrupting people. I think today people are happy to, to connect. They, they actually crave connection right? Because there isn't a lot of connection outside of, of the home going on. And so it's just a super opportunity to, for us to sharpen the sock, communicate with our customers. And, and, uh, and as I said, uh, strategy number one, most important, look after yourself. 
the overarching piece for me, guys, is be safe. Um, you know, money isn't going to help us if we're not here to enjoy it or our families aren't here to enjoy it. And for me, in this kind of environment, be safe means different to different people, right? It means different for some than others. I, I am not the judge of, of uh, anybody's safety measures, um, but, I, but I would imply, implore on everybody, whatever you do in your business, make sure that it's comfortable for you, it's comfortable for your family uh, relative to safety. But certainly we have technology today um, where all of that is, is, uh, is appropriate to do. And the acceptance of that technology is like I've never seen it. Yesterday, I was on a video conference with a 75-year-old business owner who I have been trying to get, trying to get on video conference for, for five years and wouldn't do it, right? And now, uh, yesterday, we had his whole company on video. He's on Zoom. And it was funny. I was teasing him because he, he, the present, his presentation was so great. He said, well, I, I had to get a realtor come and stage my office. So it looked good, right? <laughs> a, real, a, a realtor stager to come, rather. And, uh, but, but the point is, is that that, that, that communication mode is uber, uh, uber uh, acceptable. And so just in closing, here's what I'd like to say, guys, is that whatever day this is going to be over, let's say that it's, uh, you pick your day, end of April, middle of May, end of May. If it's the end of April, there's only 15 working days left. If it's the middle of May, it's only 25 working days. That's as long as you have to communicate with your clients. That's as long as you have to sharpen the saw, right? And so you, this is going to be over before we know it. It's going to be, we're going to be looking at it in the rear view mirror going, oh my gosh, I survived the, you know, the, the 2020 pandemic uh, in the real estate business. And so it's so, so important that what we're talking about today in terms of strategies, that we get started on them today, right? That Monday looks like, hey, I've got a routine. I'm communicating with my clients if you're not already, and I'm sharpening uh, the saw. Because when the end at the end of the of the shutdown comes, um, I want you guys to be ready to take advantage of everything I know is coming down the pipe. All right. Well, there we go. So, uh, Wayne, um, um, thank you very much, guys. Do you have any questions for him? All right. Uh, I think Laura Smith has a question. Laura? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I so, you, Laura, Wayne, you can hear me, correct? Yeah, but Laura's muted, I think. Oh, she, she's muted. No, I actually didn't have a question, but... So well, I, I, one of the things that Wayne had brought up is, you know, we were talking about uh, things like uh, uh, video. We have, we had an agent uh, and we've been uh, promoting video. I think I spoke about this earlier this week, but for those of you guys that uh, weren't on that, I, I was uh, speaking more specifically about uh, 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 Pat Fume. So Pat over last weekend shot me an email uh, or shot me a, a text because she was concerned about you know, just like a lot of you guys are probably going to be concerned about sending out a lot of, you know, sending out videos and how am I going to look on it? And is it going to come across wrong? Is it going to seem as though I'm trying to get business at a time that I, you know, I shouldn't. And, uh, you know, I, I pretty much told her to, you know, you know, that, that she knew what she was doing and, and, you know, uh, that uh, as long as she's being genuine out there and, and offering help and, and um, you know, for, for her to get out there and start communicating uh, with video because that's, that's the future. And uh, I, I went back and I looked at a text that I got from her and I just wanna uh, read it for you again. So, um, uh, so she, she said uh, pretty much uh, to paraphrase, thanks for the moral support. Wasn't sure how people would take my post with everything going on, funny thing happened. At least 20 of my past clients some of which I hadn't talked to in years, uh, have responded and private messengered me and text me. Uh, and she's just like, you know, loving it. So she got a lot of positive feedback from her clients. Um, and, and all she did is, you know, she was like sitting in her car and she says, hey, this is Pat and I'm here for you. And if there's anything that you need, you know, you know let me know. Um, and as Wayne has said earlier, you know, it's just the perfect time to do that you know, oh, uh, you know, oh, by the way, without, you know, taking someone else's um, terms, but I was saying that, oh, by the way, you know, I, 
I've, I've been sitting here and um, I've had a lot of, you know, a lot of time and I have to apologize and I haven't, you know, got with you in a long, in a long time, but you know, I, I was thinking about you and uh, I want to know how you're doing and see if there's anything that you need. So I think that's like an important thing. We keep pushing and pushing uh, that, uh, that, uh, you know, this is the time and I, you know, you, you start to hear the same things over and over again, but this is the time that people are going to remember who was nice and who was there during this time, you know, who, who was there for you during the pandemic of 2020, you know, uh, again, I go back to, you know, where were you when, you know, all the, the, the great catastrophes happened? Where were you when, you know, Superstorm Sandy hit? Where were you when, you know, the, the, the planes came down into the trades? Like everybody remembers and everybody remembers what you did. So you gotta, this is the time that you have to reach out and continue to move um, and, and develop those relationships uh, with your client base and getting them deeper and deeper and making it more just about uh, more than just about trying to sell them a house or their cousins a house, you know, to get uh, more involved in that client base. Because then those people down the road, when times are better, you know, they're going to want to help you because you were there for them. Um, so yeah, Wayne, when do you think this thing's done? You know what? I, I, I mean, I watch all of the press, uh, press conferences from the governors and the national press conference and, uh, you know, best estimates probably some uh, sometime between uh, end of April and mid May, depending on on the states. I mean, there are states right now that aren't uh, aren't shut down and that have a very low uh, infection load. Uh, Arizona is a good example of that. Um, and so, but I think you know the 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 positive piece of it, guys. Two things I think Randall that are super positive. One is that. You know, if you look at the hot spots, and obviously New York City is is the hot spot, the uh, the, the curve is changing now. Uh, the deaths, unfortunately, are still very high, but the the new admissions to hospital are way down, uh, which tells you that the curve is coming down. Um, and and the second piece that's really, I think, uh, uh, and when you know, if you don't believe me about what's coming down the pipe at the end, guys, I've been watching the stock market the last three or four days. Oh, yeah. It is on fire. Yeah. Now, I got to tell you something, uh, you know, I'm a, I, I don't take, I hope you don't think poorly of me if I say, I think I'm a pretty smart guy, but I hold no candle to the people who invest in the stock market. Those people are, they have all the resources. They're the smartest people on the planet, right? They're looking down the road, down the road, and they are betting trillions that on, on a recovery. And when I say betting, they don't bet. <laughs> These are not betting folk. <laughs> They're looking at the facts going, Hey, we can see an end. We know this thing's going to kick open. We know there's pent up demand, right? And uh, and so I think at the end of yesterday, the market was back well over twenty three thousand. And I, I want to just comment on that for a sec. I saw a very reputable I, I, another one of my information sources, Bloomberg Business News. What, and so I'm, I'm always watching the business news. And 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 about a week before the the coronavirus crisis, maybe two weeks. There was a very uh, reputable fund manager, uh, and when I say fund manager, he he would he manages fifty billion. He said, "Look, I've been in the business thirty years, and they entrust me with fifty billion, right?" And he said at that time, guys, he said, um, "The the uh, he goes, I've got most of my my fund in cash because he said at that time the trailing price to equity, the trailing PE ratio on the on the Dow was 20, uh, 21 times." And he said, it really shouldn't be more than 14 times. So he goes, there has to be a correction. So there was a correction in the mix anyway, right? And his prediction was 22, 23,000. That's what he got, right? So here we are back to 23,000, which really is where it ought to have been. And so that right now the market is priced as though there is no interruption in the economy. And as I said, those folks are not betting people. This is not a, not a casino type operation. These are people who have all of the resources and, and information and predictions who are saying, hey, we're, we're investing trillions of dollars in that this thing's moving forward. So to me, Randell, just watching that, it, it's, it, now the question is, I, that's the facts, right? What do I wanna do about it? How do I take advantage of what's moving down the pipe? And, and I'm gonna shoot you a curveball, uh, and, and I don't know and if you can shoot it right back, 
you, you know the the Remax uh, uh, auto, uh, the artificial intelligence program. Yes. Are you seeing other other brokers uh, throughout the state taking advantage of that? I mean, this yeah. might be a good time to implement yeah. something like that. Oh, definitely. And you know, it's funny you should mention that, Rantel. And that is like again back to you know looking at weaknesses in your business, guys. Is, guys, if we don't have that in play, let's get that in play, right? Like there, there's going to be sort of minimum requirements for the business, you know. Um, and, and that will be one of them. But my point, what I was going to say, Randell, is, uh, you know, I've, obviously I have a big community of friends and people I know I've been in the business a long time. And so somebody sent me a, 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 a per private message and said, hey, uh, I'm looking at this particular uh, uh, at this particular property. What do you think? And I saw you message back. He said, well, I didn't know you were looking for, for property. And they go, well, we weren't, but we're sitting here at home, and now my wife and I are looking at these uh, virtual tours, and and uh, well, we're thinking maybe when this is over, it's time to move. <laughs> and I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, they're sitting at home bored. They've already watched the Tiger King, and they've already watched whatever the heck else we're watching, right? And uh, it's like, okay, now what? Oh, let's have a look at some listings. So back to that AI, Randell, that tells us who's active out there, right? Right. And and one of the, the great part, and I'll just do a plug for for the the AI uh, or it's called First, right? Um, uh, if if you haven't signed up for it, uh, you you want to sign up for it. Uh, first three months uh, is uh, free, um, and um, you know I know that we have some agents on right now that uh, uh, have have seen where it, it has predicted, you know, people that. Uh, uh, were supposed to or, or going to move or have a real estate need that those people actually had a, a real estate need. So um, again, it's it's a it's another tool that you can put in a place. Uh, Wayne talks about sharpening that saw. You know, uh, look, we're sitting on a, a, a Zoom training right now because, well, you know, we've had time to start sharpening our saw and bring additional things to you guys. Uh, so at the same time, you may want to you know, sharpen your soul by, if you haven't used that, it's free, try it out for three months. Um, if it does some great predicting for you, keep it. If it doesn't, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, but, and Randell, I'm going to make a prediction, you know, right. back in 2009, I bought a house and I, I, obviously I know a lot of agents and, and the agent that I always use, unfortunately she passed away a couple of years ago, but is somebody I got into real estate with, uh, we got into real estate together, went to real estate school. And in 2009, it wasn't common for us to respond to emails time, in a timely basis in this business. And I was traveling all over the world with my job and, I, and her name was Joanne. I said, Joanne, you're going to have to respond to emails like right away because I'm looking at these houses online, right? She's going, oh, really? And now that's a minimum standard today, right? Imagine if you didn't respond to email, it'd be like not picking up the phone, right? I think moving forward, guys, and, and I can remember five years ago getting a phone call, five or six years ago, I, I could look up the date from a, a, a colleague of mine in Florida, and he said, you got to fly down next Thursday in my boardroom. There's these guys presenting machine learning algorithms for AI for real estate. It's unbelievable. Okay, so I jumped on a plane. I went to, Florida, to Sarasota, and I was blown away by what they were working on, and it was the background of the guys that have first, right? And I think, Randell, that, that that technology, I mean, for me, it's another first for Remax, right? It's like RSN when nobody had satellites and training. Right. That will be a minimum standard. It'll be like you have that, like you have a telephone, uh, like you have a, a mobile, like a smartphone, like you have a computer, like you have a, a Facebook account. It's a minimum standard. I think it'll become that. So, you know, you, we got time now, jump on it and, and it's free. My goodness, like. Let's get on it. Well, that sounds great. Okay, guys, any, uh, while we're here, anything else, to, any questions? No? Everybody working really hard? Yeah, give me some thumbs up for those of you guys that are. Okay, great. Make sure, make sure you just didn't slide in a screen or a picture there in front of me. 
Um, look, uh, as we've said, like, you know, uh, you know, we're going to be doing, you know, things like this on a weekly basis. You know, uh, it's, it's great that uh, I want to thank Wayne um, and, you know, everybody give him the double, you know, you know, thumbs up. Thank you very much, Wayne. You did a well, great job in, in helping us. And, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's available uh, to, uh, to our, our company. We use him uh, for uh, our managers and our, myself, and, and we use him for coaching. Um, uh, so he keeps us motivated. And, and hopefully we're passing that on to you guys so we can get to the other end of this thing. Um, so, you know, we're here for you if, we, if you need us. Um, if there's anything, you know, our numbers, um, and, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us and, uh, you'll see, uh, uh, a new list coming out next week, um, uh, that, uh, uh, and, and we're going to try to keep our, our meetings, uh, probably around this amount of time. So in about 30 minutes or so, uh, so that way you don't have to worry about where we're going to be doing some long drawn out, uh, hour and a half classes. So we're going to. We're going to do the, the team preferred quick hits, you know, go in, hit, move on, go back and do some business. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, again, if oh, there were two chats down here before I go, uh, thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys. Thank you, Connie. Thank, thank you, you, Bonnie. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Everybody. Bye. Happy, Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Don't forget Thank next week's fun. happy hour. <laughs> what? Don't forget next week's happy hour, Wednesday night. No, I won't. <laughs> That's right. See you guys. Happy Easter. Uh, happy Easter, happy guys. Easter. Bye, guys. Happy Easter, everyone. Stay healthy. <laughs>